have compared the cost or uh, capital of the left cell, capital of the diagonal cell and capital of the below cell. It turned out that the capital of the left cell was the smallest. Therefore, psi would have at this point would have a value which would should have written as uh, of this cell would have written as a horizontal path that we came from the horizontal or the left and therefore we take draw an arrow blue to indicate that to this point we came from the left cell and similarly we can compute uh, plot these blue arrows saying how we came from the, the previous cells uh, till we reach the cell point 1 comma 1. Now you see that this the sequence of blue arrows indicate the optimal path or the optimal alignment of the misspelled word pattern with the correct spelling of the word pattern. This is useful when you, uh, this is called backtracing and this is theoretical uh, for the illustration purposes appealing and this information will be useful when you want to for example make a composite reference pattern for dynamic time walking. What does that mean? So far whenever we speak a sentence or something we used to keep one reference pattern as uh, the, uh, the reference. We speak the word zero once and we used to store it there. What is the guarantee that the zero that I told today uh, and tomorrow it will be same? It will not be Therefore, it is good not to represent a reference pattern using one utterance of a word, but multiple utterance of the same word. I say zero once now, I come in the afternoon and say zero, and come tomorrow and come zero. So, now if I have two, three repetitions of the same word, I want to make one re composite reference pattern, one composite reference pattern, one pattern from three reference sequences. Now you can do this by using the same dynamic programming and using the backtracing and averaging sequences of the same word on both horizontal and vertical axis. You can average and you can form a better pattern. Uh, you can extend it uh, to the use the method of statistics and if there are three uh, utterances of the same uh, word and you can come, you can match the three sequences using the back tracer technique that I talked about and you can even compute the mean mean and standard deviation of these three values and a few other things and to that extent it leads to the statistical model or the probabilistic model which leads to the so called hidden morphology model also. I will indicate it in the next slide. Okay, so so the back tracing is useful. It is done A to make a composite reference pattern and uh, B it is also used in probabilistic, ma probabilistic uh, 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 models such as a hidden Markov model. So you can compute one reference template from by averaging frames belong to the same phoneme or the uh, word but multiple repetitions and uh, we yeah. and you can extend this is one point. The second suppose our reference template is a spoken word then you can and in the spoken word suppose the reference uh, word we know the phoneme boundaries so the word P is here a is here, T boundary is here, there is two T's, they both belong to single phoneme. So the phoneme boundaries are this, let's say. This we already know because this is a reference pattern, we can view it and store this boundary between the phonemes. On the other hand, this is a test spoken pattern and the P was spoken for too long time and that's why there is a blue, the path is horizontal. So, we know, that, which means that by looking at this path, we know that the two frames of speech, uh, two frames of P phoneme match with one frame of P phoneme. And A here matches with A here because the path is diagonal. 
when our path is diagonal we have no problem when our path is vertical for example here it says that the in the in this reference template t was spoken for a little longer time than a test where t was spoken only for one frame and so on so we can even get the uh, phoneme sequence and not only phoneme sequence but also the duration of the phonemes in the test pattern itself we can use this to generate the composite reference templates and this is the same technique that is used to train hidden marco models and when this dynamic programming technique is used in uh, hidden marco model we call that alignment as interby alignment and the trace back that is the blue curves uh, path is called viterbi trace back this is a sort of hand waving introduction to the hidden marco model and i will talk a little more about it in the next couple of slides okay so in when we did the dynamic time warping we had the test feature vector sequence on the x axis of this grid and on the y axis we had reference feature vector sequence what we can do is this reference feature vector sequences suppose you say the uh, word uh, apple the word a the, the sound a of the word apple this is the word in written form what are the two how many phonemes are there there's a phoneme a and then there's a phoneme p and then there's a phoneme l there are only three phonemes although it is written like this there are three phonemes apple l okay. apple the three phonemes to vowel a a is several frames long let us say the vowel a is five frames long for a sake of illustration you can store the feature vector five feature vectors or what you can do is to take the average of these five feature vectors you can compute the average that is the mean vector mu and you can also compute the corresponding uh, variances or the standard deviations so when you store so if it is a multi dimensional vector then what we have is a covariance matrix so if we have five feature vectors we can compute the mean vector and the covariance matrix now this we represent it as one state one state of hidden marco model that is associated with a probability distribution probability distribution and whose parameters let's say if it is a gaussian distribution gaussian distribution has two parameters mean and standard deviation in a multivariate case when the when each point has multiple dimensions uh, the, it's a vector of attributes then we have mean vector and a covariance matrix so the what we in dtw we used to store the five feature vectors instead in hmm we take in some sense we take the average of these feature vectors belonging to the same phoneme and compute mean and standard deviation or mean vector and the covariance matrix and represent one call these amalgamation of collection of these five feature vectors as one state representing the phoneme a and it is associated with the probability distribution whose parameters are mean vector mu and the covariance matrix c so there will be essentially three probability distributions one for each phoneme so instead of rep so what did you gain firstly instead of representing five feature vectors we are storing only one feature vector one mean vector and one covariance matrix we and if quite often we assume that this covariance matrix is diagonal which means that uh, the different components of the feature vector are uncorrelated so essentially we need to store two pieces of information instead of five pieces of information so our model is compact that's the first point it is useful when you want to store it in a embedded system mobile phone and so on so small systems where the memory is short secondly 
it represents an average or statistical property of the five feature vectors therefore it allows for some variation in the values of these feature vectors and that is the second advantage so we can use the same dynamic programming technique to match a test feature vector sequence in DTW we match it with the sequence of reference feature vector sequences in HMM or our similar technique we match these we find the likelihood of each test feature vector with the, the distributions associated with the three phonemes so we need to compute the likelihood of all these values with only three times rather than some 15 times and so on so it also reduces the computation so that is the kind of so going from DTW to HMM as far as the recognition is concerned they are similar because both of them use the dynamic programming technique and in case of the dyna dynamic time warping that is template matching what we do is we have the distances and the finding the distance of a partial path uh, that is capital D at any point it is n comma m is the sum of the local distance and minimum of the cells in to the left or, or below in probabilistic models we don't have a distance concept we have the corresponding likelihood concept in case of DTW we want to minimize the di total distance capital D in case of uh, probabilistic models we want to maximize the probability of matching a test feature vector sequence uh, with a HMM, with a sequence of states or a sequence of uh, uh, probability distributions. So, in the case of so, what changes from DTW algorithm to Viterbi algorithm in HMM hidden Markov models is that instead of distance, we have the log likelihood and instead of minimizing the instead of finding out the minimum of the uh, partial distances we find the maximum of the uh, previous uh, distances that that's the way we do it there is a, another term called related to the transition probability matrix we will talk about it later so i want us to end this talk by remembering that the same technique dynamic program and um, dynamic programming is used when you want to recognize a test which test speech using the template matching method that is DTW or using a probabilistic model that is HMM or doing a spell checking as we did saw earlier or matching DNA sequences which is coded in terms of four letters in all these cases the technique that is used is called dynamic programming it e enables us to find the best match best alignment and match between two sequences of unequal lengths. And this is where you stop unless if you have any questions you can ask otherwise you will stop.